Welcome back to Cal Lutheran's student news publication, The Echo's bi-weekly podcast. This is Caroline Ason, the current editor-in-chief. This podcast today is sponsored by Christina's Pastries. Christina is a Cal Lu double alum and wants to make your day sweeter. She offers assorted treat boxes shipped nationwide each month. Visit www.christinaspastries.com or visit her page on Facebook or Instagram to learn more about her and to order yours today. With us today is Isabella, who recently wrote about the staged reading of Roe by Lisa Loomer, performed by the Theater Art and Dance Department. What is the play's synopsis? Roe is a show about the person who started the Roe v. Wade case written by playwright Lisa Loomer. The play begins in the 70s from its inception and continues through today with the most recent overturning made by the Supreme Court. As it begins in the 70s, it highlights Sarah Weddington, who is the lawyer on the case, and Norma McCorvey, who is more popularly known as Jane Roe. The first act covers the actual case, while the second act covers Norma's story from being pro-choice to her transition into a born-again Christian who is pro-life. The show is based on a lot of historical evidence, recordings from the Supreme Court that are used in verbatim, and a lot of information from both Sarah Weddington and Norma McCorvey's books. Why did the theater arts and dance department decide to perform this play? According to alumna Red Patterson, who was the director of the show, the department chose it due to the decision that the Supreme Court made recently, feeling that the issue is more relevant now than ever. In your article, you mentioned the cast made an effort to do Loomer's play justice and appear as unbiased as possible. How did they attempt to achieve this? They attempted to appear as unbiased as possible by bringing in an intimacy coordinator, according to Patterson. The coordinator walked the cast through how to handle a subject that is so charged and divisive. The director wanted to make sure that one side didn't feel more villainized than the other since these are real people that are in the show. They have also been very careful of the language that is used in the show, respectful of the thoughts and opinions of the people around them, and setting boundaries. For one of the actresses, Jules Weiss, who plays Sarah Weddington, Rose Lawyer, she's been watching different interviews that Weddington has done, especially since some interviews in the courtroom scene in the play has a verbatim from the actual court case, so she's trying to deliver her lines as accurately and with the same sort of passion as Weddington had. For another actor, Logan Sofranco, who plays Flip Benham, the pastor, he talked to a professor of his. Together, they worked out that for the best results would be to leave his views out of everything, take what the pastor believes in, mold him into himself, and bring it to the character. How does this two-sided presentation of Roe v. Wade help the production and its performance? It definitely helps the performance, since it can appeal to both sides of the debate, not just propaganda for one side in particular. It also serves as a history lesson in what happened with Roe v. Wade from the beginning of where it all started to the overturning earlier this year. As Deanna Alvarado, the actress who plays Norma McCorvey, better known as Roe, said, quote, If you do come out to support this show, I would say whatever side you're on with this Roe v. Wade, either when it was first decided or with the recent overturn, come with an open mind and knowing we aren't attacking the show, Lisa Loomer, the cast, Red, the directors, the stage managers, none of the actors. We aren't here to spit on your beliefs. We're not here to judge your beliefs. We're here to express them, since it is the way that history has been made and will continue to be made, end quote. What have some of the cast members learned during the production and preparation of Roe? So Ferenko says that he learned a lot from the women in the show. The act one is just so filled with real life scenarios for women that drive to other states for abortions, that do unsafe abortions, and the history about everything. That to him it really means that his role in society as a man is just to listen to these women and to listen to these stories that were in the play. For Alvarado, she really learned more about her character, how Roe is a powerful woman and made a difference to a lot of people in a lot of different ways. That her experience of being able to portray her, being able to spread this knowledge, and sharing how Rose's life has shaped history has been humbling. Is there anything else the listeners should know? Listeners should know that if they do come to this show, it should be with an open heart and open mind. This show doesn't shy away from the reality of the case and its effects, even if that may mean bringing up some potentially triggering information. The debate isn't as black and white as many may think, so it's best to come ready to listen, especially since it may spark up a lot of healthy conversation. 
The play also attempts to highlight just how powerful this story is, maybe even overwhelming. But as Sofarenko said, that's theater. Up next, we have Marcel, who recently wrote about the new acquisition by Cal Lutheran of a field striping robot. What does the field striping robot do? So the new field striping robot, basically, it is placed down, it's led to a position, and it recognizes a home base, and then it recognizes where it is in a, in a satellite and what sports lines it needs to paint, and then it just automatically drives in, a, in like a set path based on floor plans and paints the line with a, a little nozzle on the side. It, it just drives forward and has a, a little nozzle of paint the lines down and it pretty much is able to recognize where it should be, where it shouldn't be, and when to stop painting and when to start painting because it has these automatic floor plans loaded into it. Is this more beneficial than having someone paint the lines? If yes, how so? Yeah, so the field striping robot saves a ton of time. As the groundskeeper Rafael Villacana Pantoja told me, it used to take multiple guys trying to put a string on the field it would take, he said, anywhere from three to five hours to paint manually, including cleanup time. And they were having to wheel up the string for the for the lines right as football practice got in. So they were really pressed on time and it was taking a, a lot more paint. It was taking somewhere, they said, somewhere in the 200 gallons of paint was used a week. And now it's all, it's down to almost 10 so it, it saves a lot of manpower and it saves a lot of paint and it just saves a lot of time, which means that there isn't as, as much fear of having to cut into a football practice or a soccer practice because they're still having to repaint these lines. So overall, it's a pretty massive upgrade for the groundskeeping crew. They're way more time efficient in painting the lines for sports. What is some background prior to getting this robot? So Nick Boudreaux, was looking into trying to get lines painted quicker for the Angel City field. He had been told a lot about how there was a lot of time issues with painting the lines for the field. So he did some research and he came across this company, Turf Tank, that was giving a demo. And so he went to the demo and he, he said he was pretty much blown away with, with what the machine could do. So he had Turf Tank come over, do a demo. It ended up being a lot cheaper than they were anticipating. They were able to use it for Angel City, but they also are now able to use it for the campus fields. He just used it basically to improve both the Angel City and the campus. And he's also looking into having it do some other things like painting parking spots and and whatnot. Who were some of the key people involved, and how did the university acquire this robot? From what it sounds like, it was pretty much all Nick Boudreau looking into the subject and researching what he could do to improve uh, line painting for sports fields. I'm not sure about the logistics or how much the, the robot cost, but I know that it was a lot cheaper and a lot easier to get than they were anticipating. So it was overall just a good a good purchase. and. I think we're looking into doing some more stuff with Turf Tank. Where else might this robot be useful? So it sounds like the robot can be used for a lot of different things. Uh, The first thing that Boudreaux talked about was temporary parking spots for commencement or other events. He said with a software update, it it could be taught basically how to automatically paint the CLU logo, which would be really cool. And then he also said that we could do some stuff for a field next to Jack's Corner for events and stuff like that, for painting the grass. I, there, it sounds like there's just a lot of possibilities for the field striping robot to do more events for the school and stuff not, not just related to sports. Are there any other plans to help with the upkeep of sports facilities? So one other thing that Boudreau talked about was that we are also looking into getting a lawnmower basically to automatically mow the fields for sports and he said that that would be a a really good addition as well uh in an email with ryan van omeren he said basically the same thing that they were looking into getting an automatic real mower but that the current lead time for it was around six months or over six months so who knows when 
we're going to be looking into that, but I believe that it was also a collaboration with Turf Tank we're looking to do for that uh, lawnmower, basically. Is there anything else the listeners should know? So as a last thing, it just sounds like there's a lot of uh, projects being worked on by the facilities and projects crew. There's a lot more stuff that you don't really hear about as a student that they're looking into getting and helping improve the quality of life of the campus. So just be on the lookout for any of that kind of stuff, any new gadgets, because I know that Nick Boudreau sounded really excited for a lot of the new uh, technology that's coming out that really helps streamline events and sports and all that kind of stuff. So it was just a really interesting, a r- really interesting thing to learn about. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Look out for another podcast from us soon.